going into the super prostate and then I'll come and check in with each of you. All right. So take a deep breath, close your eyes and go into your super prostate. However you normally do that. So either with your word or phrase or by going through the exercise of holding something or someone you love in your arms, imagining holding them in your arms. Feel your heart expanding. Imagine your, imagine that feeling in your chest or solar plexus as a ball of light or energy. Imagine it spreading down to your toes, up to the top of your head, out to your fingertips. So you're now full of that light that energy. You now fill each of your cells, each of those 50 trillion cells that make up your body, fill each one with that love, that light, that energy. Love each cell just for existing. Very good. And now feel Feel the additional light, the additional energy, the additional unconditional love that's coming from me. And open your heart to accept that. I love you just for existing exactly as you are, no matter what. Very good. And now imagine the little you Fill that little you with that same light, that energy. Love that little you just for existing. And now fill your subject with that same light or energy. And imagine them not wanting to be with you or they're not happy in some way and keep them filled with that same light, that energy. Love them anyway, just for existing. And feel the strength of your power as you do that. And now imagine that light or energy overflowing from you and filling the room you're in. Feel that stretch, that expansion of your power. Very good, you can open your eyes. All right, so welcome, was that good? Oh good, I'm glad you liked it, very good. And um, so let's check in with each person, find out how you're doing, and then, um, I, yeah, I'm going to share uh, one of my experiences with you um, after that. So, Kathy, you're up first. How are you today? I'm fine. Thanks, Odile. Um, I'm per generally pretty good. I was just explaining um, how I had migraines for 45 years and how I got over them and stuff, but that was more of an interest talk than anything. Okay, very good. And so, um, did you want to, because I don't, oh, Oh yes, we are recording. For a moment, I thought we weren't recording. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> so, would you? That I'm assuming that was before we started recording. Is it something that you wanted to share for anybody who's watching the recording, or um, it, not relevant? Not really, because it, the way I resolved it, didn't have anything to do with mindfulness or changing. Oh, okay. Um, so no. All right. It's okay. Not. Yeah. I thought I'd offer that in case it was something Thank useful. You. If yeah. you're, and you're very welcome. And so any questions today or anything? I did, but it's gone. I hope okay. it'll come back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. If it does, just let us know. All right, and welcome. So glad to see you. Thank you. All right, and then Kara. Good morning, Kara. How are you today? Good morning. I'm very well, thank you. Good. I apologize for the dogs barking in the background. That's all right. <laughs> um, I, I will share for those who weren't on the call, um, you know, before 
before we started recording and everything, um, that I had migraines for 20 some years and it was this work, it was changing a memory that actually stopped them and I haven't had any since and that was five years ago. So and I wanted to give to, to Tamina, is that how you say your name? Tamina? Um, I wanted to give her some hope because she has migraines and um, okay so, yeah. very good yes that's wonderful thank you for for sharing that Kara and so um, with migraines I had migraines but not very serious and I didn't have any pain with them um, I actually thought there was something wrong with me it was a long time ago um, uh, it used to affect my vision and my ability to comprehend so my, my cognitive um, uh, abilities and um, my mum used to get migraines very very badly with the pain and everything she had to be in a dark room and that um, but apart mm -hmm. from that I don't I, th I for me I think it was stress because when I de-stressed when I no longer had stress in my life I haven't I haven't experienced anything like that since but you're right linked to um, to childhood memories so um, yeah you know asking those questions how do i know how does it feel where in my childhood did i feel it and then if there's anything that comes up that's linked so fantastic thank you cara for sharing that that's really encouraging to know that isn't it very good all right and did you have any questions for today no no i don't just all glad right. to be here and oh i just want to say i really like doing the um exercise at the beginning Oh, good, good, good. Yeah, good. I like yes, that. That was, that was Steve's suggestion, and yes, I think it's a it's, it was an excellent one. Yes. So that's <laughs> thank you, Kara. All right, and then Tamina. Good morning or oh, good afternoon for you. How are you today? I'm feeling overwhelmed. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, well, obviously, I had my really bad migraine on Friday, and I tried to contain it, I tried to take medicine, tried to de-stress, but it wasn't until Saturday where I started to feel sort of like a convulsion, and the only way to release the migraine was to basically vomit. Okay. And, um, and I was like, I was very low in energy and a bit jittery for uh, until Monday. Okay, I'm so and, sorry to hear that. And then uh, my bathroom flooded. <laughs> okay, how <laughs> how did that happen? What what uh, when you say flooded? In Basically, what way? Um, I could hear um, one of these sink tap pipes at the back of the sink, um, like dripping. So I contacted mm -hmm. the bathroom fitter and he said to go through the motions of checking like the valves and this and that and then it was dripping more and more and more <laughs> and um, and then before I know it, it was about three hours into early evening there's a flood and then I tried to um, turn the main stop valve completely but there was something wrong with that and through the whole night there was a flood going all the way through the big bathroom and then out into the wall onto the carpet. Oh, so, I'm so sorry. And then um, it, I could feel the adrenaline. I could feel the, you know, you said about the, um, oh God, um, the cortex. The, uh, it's where uh, you get the chemicals going through. The limbic system? No, the stress chemicals. Okay, yes. So, so. Um, um, we yeah. need to override. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, you, your fight, freeze, flight state from your amygdala. Oh, yeah. I wanted to run away. I wanted to run away. I did. Yes. And um, so I couldn't sleep. And then by about six o'clock in the morning, I thought, right, I need an emergency plumber. So I called. And luckily by um, half past eight, um, somebody contacted me, came over and going through the motions, finally the leak stopped, but I was left with all this carpet and I had to lift it up. And then it finally it did get sorted out by the bathroom fitter and that was by lunchtime, but I am left with feeling overwhelmed. I'm, I'm feeling like, I don't know where to turn. I usually come for eat, but none of that's helping. I am, I'm seriously overwhelmed. I'm like, I'm okay. really, really trying my best to calm down. Calm. Yeah. 
Okay, so so <laughs> take a deep breath. <laughs> take a deep breath. All right. So uh, so Tamina, where in your childhood did you feel overwhelmed? Oh God. Um, that's to do with the childhood abuse. So that would be something okay. I can't really. Do. Yeah. So you don't need to go into that now. So, but that will be where it's coming from. So it's, it's not, to, it's not to do with what's currently going on, of course. So, okay. and I, I suspect the migraine is connected to, uh, I suspect yeah. it's the same thing. Okay. Yeah. I am going to try um, the, the questions and the, um, and changing and, the memories. And, yeah. 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 I'm going to do that. Okay, good. So because, um, the, you know, the, the bathroom thing, the flooding and that so frustrating, I can imagine. And you know, all of that, but the, the level of the trigger and the fact that you're still triggered implies it's, it's not just about that. It's, it's coming from childhood. So I would say definitely do whatever you can to change that. Remember that we are doing another workshop on changing memories. So if you need help, especially if it's trauma, um, you know, you can, you can, join that. So the okay. first thing we recommend for anyone is working with us in our one-to-one -one because we can obviously get faster, more effective uh, changes. But if you can't manage that, then the one-day workshop really is uh, very powerful. Plus you can get one-to-one -one help during the workshop so that if there's anything, any trauma or anything you can't manage on your own, you've got that option. You know, I mean, obviously our first choice would be to work with everybody one-to-one, -one, <laughs> you know, regardless. And unfortunately we can't do that. There's just not enough time in the day. But um, so that would be the next best option. And we are, we're talking about, we're thinking about just this morning, um, we had a question from someone. And so we're, we're looking at creating other options that are in between so that it's not as um, expensive, uh, but but it still helps at least, you know, a bit more than trying to do it on your own. So, um, okay. so there's those options as well, but definitely before you, so this is really important for everyone. And this is one, this is one of our cornerstones of the Remit method is make sure that before you start digging around in your childhood memories, get into the superpower state first. So before you start looking for the references or changing the references or anything like that, get into your superpower state first, do whatever it takes, you know, however you get into it, and then ask yourself those questions. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense, but one of the things I've always been meaning to ask you is that uh, one of the difficult things I've, I've always found ever since I joined the superpower our course and the group is that it's so hard to get out of that stress chemical because when you're absorbed in that stress chemical it's like as if um, you've got a um, an animal in a cage and it's trying to escape it's trying to find a way out you're like how do you <laughs> yes and Steve and I both know that well so uh, that is normal <laughs> it's not that you're doing it wrong or anything like that that is that's part of being human yeah. Where the empowerment comes, where the, the difference comes is how you handle that. So it's not that you're supposed to be able to just snap out of it or anything like that. It's about how do I, so I'm going to give you a, um, a personal example of myself that so okay. I was going to share this yeah. uh, anyway. Um, so, and I'm going to, you know, I like to be as honest and straightforward as possible. Um, but I also like to make sure that I have a solution before I share any of my challenges yeah. so that I'm saying this was the challenge. This is how I solved it. So <laughs> as recently as yesterday, <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Um, I'm not the only one then. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's why I say it is human. So none of these things, none of the modalities that anybody uses is a magic pill because we're human. So even the, you know, the, the, people you see who are um, very zen and very together, they're going to have their challenges. It's about how do they handle those challenges and how quickly uh, they're able to, to yeah. pull themselves back on track. So it's not that you never get off track, you never get triggered. So yesterday I had um, an issue. So something was supposed to be delivered and it wasn't delivered. And it was a big, you know, 
it was that, something... I had that yesterday morning. I got a completely rubbish ah. delivery. Oh my God, that okay. set me off. <laughs> so I was so frustrated mm-hmm. and I was, you know, phoning that and then I was on hold and then, and, but I was doing superpower. I was holding it together and, um, and then, you know, on hold and then you have to phone another and then it's not them, it's someone else. So it was one of those where it was very, um, you know, a, a big challenge for me. And I was maintaining my state and then I just kind of lost it a bit. And I just thought, you know what, this is ridiculous. And, you know, I got this yeah. anger, which is very, very out of character for me. So I, uh, <laughs> you know, it's really, Steve was like, whoa, what's going on? Because <laughs> <laughs> he, I don't think he's ever seen me like that. So, um, but it's how I used to be all the time or most of the time. So it was a flashback to that time. And now because of what I know now, I was pulling myself out, but I still got into it. So I, there was a moment where I thought, I know that I could and should let this go. I know I should walk away, mm. do something else and not come back until I'm feeling not triggered and then phone the people, contact the people, you know, investigate. But I, m- so in the old days, I would have said I couldn't do that, but I know that it was a choice. I just decided, no, this should be, you know, whatever it was. So afterwards, uh, so what it does though, is at the same time, I was aware that this will pass. I was aware it was a trigger. I was aware it's coming from childhood. It's nothing to do with these, what's going on now. Um, and I knew that it would, you know, afterwards I would find what it is and change it. So and th- I'm saying that because that takes some of the pressure off so that okay. in the moment you're triggered, you're not beating yourself up and going, hi, and I can't believe I'm doing this, you know, any of that kind of thing. Just go, right, I'm going to ride with it. I'm choosing to do this or I'm not choosing to do it. Whatever it is, later I will come back and sort it out. But right now, this is how I'm reacting. So there, <laughs> right? Because yeah. that takes that wrestle out of it. So, um, then afterwards, Steve said to me, and of course, Steve is the most wonderful person to be with because he's so good at that. And, you know, so he said to me, okay, so what's the feeling? And I was like, yeah, it's, it's this, I feel like I could burst. And, and, it, and I can tell it's not me. It's this weird, um, I feel so, uh, you know, I couldn't even describe it. But then Steve said, uh, you know, it sounds like, um, I can't remember the words you, he used, but it was... He, for, for me, it was bewildered. I was totally bewildered. I, I thought, I can't believe this. Right, right. So, uh, yeah, and so it didn't make sense and, and that kind of thing. And I felt like I couldn't speak. It was that kind of feeling. And Steve linked it back in whatever way he did to my, to of course, childhood. But my brother and sister, who were a year younger than me, and he said, it sounds like being, having your buttons pushed and not being able to do anything about it. And I was like, I don't know. I don't have any memories of that. But as he was talking, I, it started to, a vague memory started to come up, not a specific memory, but I, I then remembered that them, they, that feeling of them pushing my, you know, making me, pushing me to the point where I scream or pushing me to the point where I can't bear it anymore and in addition to that a a memory came up that i didn't remember myself but my sister reminded me of it and uh, she felt so bad about it that she apologized and she said i feel terrible of me crying in the playground at school and her and her friends dancing around me (laughs) dancing around me making fun of me as i was crying which is yeah it seems funny now just the dancing no, it's not really that funny <laughs> it's, quite, it's quite a bad experience yeah but i mean <laughs> so because i've changed so much i'm i don't feel any trigger by it but i can imagine that for that little me that must have been obviously that same feeling of i can't i can't make it stop and it doesn't make sense all that anyway long story short so finding those meant yeah. that i could re re so I didn't have specific memories to change, but I created new memories of my brother and my sister and me and, you know, and the dancing, I changed it to, we were all dancing. I was in the middle and then someone else came in the middle and I was dancing around. So it was a dancing <laughs> thing. 
So <laughs> I'm just sharing all of that with you to give you an idea of number one, that if you're triggered, it's not, there's nothing wrong with you. It's just about, okay, so I'm triggered now. It's human as it happens, but what am I going to do next? Or what am I going to do? So, and then of course, later, I, th I always think to myself, so next time, what will I do? Where was the turning point? Where was the point where I could have made a different choice? And what will I do next time? So of course, the point that could have made a uh, a, a different choice was <laughs> pretty much all the way through it. At any point I could have gone, you know what, I'm going to walk away. I'm going to come back later. So, um, but not to beat yourself up for not doing that. You just go, okay, well, next time that's what I'll do. So that's, th that's empowering then, then you're not, so you're still dealing with whatever you're dealing with, but it's not, um, you know, disempowering. So hopefully that gives an idea. And what I want to say about the, the overwhelm. So, get into the superpower state first get you know make sure you're feeling that expansion that unconditional love do whatever it takes and if you can't do that then do something else that makes you feel good so watch comedy listen to music do an activity you love do some physical activity whatever it get what, go to sleep if necessary whatever I it takes and good, the good. Turned up. good and then get into the superpower state make sure you're in the right think of that as getting into your your detective outfit <laughs> and then you can do the detective work then go yeah. okay so how does this feel uh, well how do i know how does it feel where in my childhood do i feel it wow. and go and change the memories that's what you mean about the superpower go into your superpower and then what happens is the stress chemicals get reduced further that's and further it. you can think clearly exactly. and then do the work right got it exactly sense. Is yeah. that good? Because otherwise we start, if we, if we don't do that, we start digging around in the childhood, which is yeah. just putting, pumping more stress chemicals into the system and you can't think straight. And okay. I do okay. have one last question that I've always been meaning to ask you, which is, and I think other people might find the same thing, is that where do you get your creative ideas or suggestions of changing the childhood memory to a more empowering one? I've tried that over the past many months since I started the Superpower um, course. Right. So that's a good question. And I wasn't very um, creative with it in the beginning. It's just that the more I did it and the more I worked with other people, the more uh, kind of, so again, like anything, you start developing that, th those yeah. neural networks that create uh, in that way. So that's why we created the garden the new memory wow. garden and we haven't actually done much in there because we've been so busy with everything else but join the the memory garden facebook group and we will start posting um ideas for new memories there and encourage and where and do we can do pardon where do i find it i couldn't the find link, it on the link is um i did put the link on the resources page but i'm going to share it in the chat here as well um right now and then for whoever's watching the video um we will uh i'll put it on the page underneath the um underneath the recording of this so you mean on youtube no no it's um it's on facebook it's a okay. private private facebook group so no one can see what you post in there and no one can actually even tell who's in the group unless they belong well, unless I, mean, they I i've joined the three uh, groups the Remit Method, Superpower, and the um, Law of Attraction. The um, this. yeah, right. This is this is a brand new group that we just put up, uh, and I yes. uh, and this is news to Odile, but I actually posted in the group this morning. So I oh, did, did make you? the you, if you if you for those for those for those who want to get a glimpse of you know a three year old me and some oh. new memories that I started. It, it, it's the first post of the page. And oh, fantastic. So the hope is that as we're sharing these new memories, it will start sparking other ideas for other people of how That's they true. can start changing their childhood. So That's I'm it. actually, since yesterday, uh, I'm trying to figure out how I can put a Palomino pony into my childhood. So. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So hopefully that helps. And um, it oh, good, good, good. good. Yeah. Very I mean, it's, good. It's, it's different when you're reading it, but when I'm actually speaking with you about it, 
it makes yes. more sense because you're expressing it with a bit more emphasis and detail. Yes, yes. Very good. I'm so glad, Tamina. Yay. I'm yeah, excited. I knew it. I knew it. Good, good, good. Good <laughs> job, sweetheart. Thank, Thank you. you for sharing. You're very welcome. All right. So, Katrina, how are you today? Yes, I'm, I think I'm good. Yes, I had a rock and roll time with myself, but, um, <laughs> but I'm going to read as usual. Um, so I, ha I have a magical story to tell about Charmaine Moy. Okay. Ooh, nice. Uh huh. So, uh, what do I see? Um, now I have Charmaine at boarding school. Um, yeah. But it was my secret, it was magical, and no one knew who owned the pony. Charmaine was kept in the field at the front of the school. Everyone would say, ah, what a beautiful pony. I wonder who owns her. And then, at night when everyone was asleep, I would supernaturally exercise her. It felt so good, I was so happy, I was so proud of myself. No one knew that Charmian was mine. And the wonderful thing about it was, everyone wanted to be my friend, including Helen. Very good, well done, Katrina. And how does that feel? Oh, fantastic. Good, Yeah. well done, well done. Do you, do you remember yesterday, Wanda wanted to, is it Wanda? Yes, Wanda, yeah. Uh, she wanted to jump on the pony. Yeah. <laughs> and I was thinking, uh, uh, no, no. And that brought up a memory of a cousin that took my pony and wouldn't give her back. Oh, wow. So mm -hmm. After that, I'm super protective and nobody gets, you can look and you can admire, but you can't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's fair enough. And so I would also then change that memory. Would you? So the one of your cousin taking taking your pony so that uh, they never took it so they never took her so um you can start with they took her and then you said give her back and they gave her back do that okay. as a stepping stone and then the second part of that is maybe they asked but you said ah sorry no unfortunately um i can't do that i can't allow that and they went oh okay right so you want to give that little you the power to choose who does what with her. Okay. But does that mean then everybody can ride the pony now? No, I not unless you me. want them to. Oh, okay. Not unless you want them to. So, but you, so I would change that memory of your cousin taking her, not giving her back because mm. that's a piece of, that's a piece of data that's affecting other things in your life that aren't to do with the pony. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, that's a piece of data that's forming uh, part of your, who you are and how the world works. So that is important to change anyway, regardless of Charmaine and regardless of the boarding school memory, just as a separate piece of data, mm -hmm. change it to the opposite positive and empowering. All right. Yeah. And the other one, remember you were telling me to write the, the justice letter to myself and to everybody. Yes. Um, the only person I got writing to was to my granny. Good. And I only had one memory. Uh, so uh, your four grandparents, I didn't meet any of them. And I only remember one sentence, right. which really destroyed my life. And it was, um, I will read it out to you. Um, so I went up to visit her. There was two farms and I was eight years of age and I was up visiting. Mm -hmm. And she says one line to me. Um, I open the door and walk in and she says, uh, what's that wee gypsy doing in my kitchen? Get her out of here. And wow. she was so, yeah, she was so mean to me. I was shocked, mortified, confused. Why is she talking to me like this? Yeah. And then I didn't know then that this day would change the rest of my life. Uh, my granny taught me to be mean, that I, you know, for me to be mean to me and to think nothing of me. In her, in, in our upbringing, we looked down on 
which we shouldn't have done, on gypsies. So I ended up looking down on me as I was compared to one. I looked down on me all of my life. All of this told me I didn't belong, I was not important, and I never got praised. So that all came from her. Perfect. Not one line. That is amazing. Isn't that amazing? That um, is really, really amazing. And so, of course, now, now you need to change it. And so you may need to change your granny's childhood because she got that from somewhere, right? She, that, she wasn't born with that. So I would change her childhood. And then, of course, what you're, what you're wanting to end up with is when you walk into her kitchen, she's, oh, my darling. Oh, I'm so happy to see you. Aren't you gorgeous? You better watch out. I'm going to keep this one, right? <laughs> Okay. That's what you want to end up with. So you've got that feeling of that connection, that praise, that love, that appreciation, that respect, mm. that acknowledgement. All right. Good yeah. job, Katrina. And thank you so much for sharing that. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Very good. You're welcome. Yeah. And let's go on to Boguswava. Good morning, Boguswava. How are you today? Good morning. I'm good. Um, what I want to share with you guys is that yesterday I went out and I go to many different places and I didn't feel fear of that Good. virus at all. And I was thinking, okay, is this the superpower or is, I don't know what's happened, but I don't feel fear. And today I'm going to go again. I Fantastic. need to buy some stuff. But now I have a question. Is it safe to not feel fear? That's new for me. Good question. Very good question. <laughs> Steve's rubbing his hands. <laughs> because if I'm not going to feel fear, maybe I'm going to go everywhere and I'm going to get the shit. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's a fair enough question. So here's the truth. Fear does not keep us safe. Fear keeps us stressed. Now, if you think about traffic, you don't need to be frightened of traffic to not walk out in front of a car and get hit by a car, right? And knives, you don't have to be frightened of knives to not cut yourself. So what it is, is it's about being strategic. You do not need to be frightened of getting sick to be able to take the precautions, wear the mask, wear the glove, do whatever they say to do, you know, keep the distance, wash your hands, don't touch your face. All of those precautions that everyone is, is taking in order to be safe, you don't have to feel fear to do them, you just do them, right? Yes, but it's like it's new things, I feel weird. I yeah. Don't know. That's normal as well. So anything new is going to feel is going to feel weird and unusual, um, and it's a case of getting getting used to it. But you, the, when you're not feeling fear, when you're feeling good, you've got your prefrontal cortex online. You've got your cognitive thinking online. So you can be strategic. You can be careful. You can be. You've got your judgment is is reliable. Is more reliable. You've got um, problem solving skills and all of that. When you're feeling fear, you're reacting on automatic and that's when it can be dangerous because you haven't got that part of your brain online. So you're just it reacting. It's the opposite because I'm used to be fear all the time. Yes. And that's yeah, and I just wanted to jump in that uh, my, my thing for years and years of my life was anxiety. I was always living in some state of anxiety. And as I started to clear that, I, I'm pretty sure that I never really understood what non-anxious was until I was in like my early 40s. And then coming to that place of, oh my goodness, this is a completely different state. I was starting to feel anxious about, about the not fact feeling that anxious. not exactly. feeling anxious. So yeah. give yourself, just give yourself a little time. Your body and brain need to catch up. You've made some shifts in what's going on up here in your, in your uh in your networks, you're changing some things up here. Now your body's catching up with that. So give it some time to get used to being in that place of like, oh, I can be outside and I don't feel the fear or it's just going to feel a little bit different, but give it a little bit of time yeah. as well. That's it. It's and free and comfortable. 
with yeah. no fear. It's like different world, I know. <laughs> exactly. So enjoy it. So enjoy it and reassure yourself and go, it's okay. As long as I'm being sensible and taking the precautions I need to take, it's okay. You don't have to feel you can enjoy. So, and this is the case with all emancipation. Okay, whenever someone frees themselves of something, it feels weird. And so I'll tell you, I mean, just from an animal point of view, um, if, you know, if an animal has been tied up for most of its life, and then you take the, 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 the rope off or whatever, they're not going to go very far at first, because they're not used to it. It feels weird. Why would they do, you know, just, they're not, they won't run away if it's been, if that's the way they've been conditioned. So um, um, I'm doing, I've got so many stories in my head and I'm trying to pick through the, the quickest ones to tell you. Uh, an example, my, my, my grandmother told us about this. Uh, so they were in the circus and they, they got a pony from somewhere for the act. And it was a polo pony. So it was used to play polo, which it would sticks. And so it was always doing this because it would shy from the, from the sticks. Now there was no sticks anymore. It was just trotting round a ring, but the pony was still doing this, even though there was no sticks. Yeah. So that's what's at the moment. Until you get used to it, you're still feeling like, oh, I should be, there should be something there. And that's just conditioning. So the answer is to reassure yourself, do the superpower, keep in that state as much as possible, and allow yourself to relax. Okay. Is that all right? Yes. Good job, Bogoswab. I'm so proud of you. Well done. Thank Good you. job to you. Thank you. I don't know. It's happened. I don't know how. <laughs> yeah. It just takes a little while. And I tell you what, soon it won't be long before you don't even notice it anymore because it's just just you. It's just your life, your way of life. Okay. All Good. right. Good. And Cheryl. Good morning, Cheryl. Good morning. Hi. That was fun to see with Bogoslava. That was awesome. And um, I have to tell Katrina that um, yesterday when you were talking about um, the friend that you had as a, as a child that you were always looking at and, and wanting to be like her and so on and so forth, that resonated with me so much. And so I got a call yesterday from that girl <laughs> in my yeah. life. From my childhood, I swear. Oh my goodness. That yeah, is amazing. Now, <laughs> Fantastic. I don't know if it was good or bad, but my, um, you know, she was calling because of what happened with my husband, mm -hmm. but it's also been, you know, more than a month. So it was, the timing was just weird, but yeah. of course I didn't, I was like, oh my God, she called me. Oh no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But um, I did not get to talk to her yet because we keep we kept missing each other. But I thought that was funny um, yes. that she she called, and so maybe I'm bringing up something that I also need to heal uh, within myself. And I also wanted to say um, at the beginning when you were speaking, Odile, yeah. I, I was thinking in my head. I was picturing myself in the room, like looking down at myself, and I was like, you know what? as if I'm like the only person in the world. And I was like, this voice is coming from God, from my higher power talking to me right now. And then everything you said after that was just like, oh my gosh, she really is speaking from a higher power. It was just, if you go back and listen, it was just crazy. Um, so I think you're amazing. And I know she was talking to all of us. I know I, it's not just me. <laughs> but at the time, it just felt like, wow. This well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna level that up a little and say it was you talking to you. So oh. it, the words may have been coming from me, but it's, it's actually, you know, it's just a way for you to bring that to your own attention, because we're all connected. Like yeah. yeah, that's that's really nice. Thank you. So whatever you were thinking about me, put that on yourself and think, wow, that's amazing that I managed to do that. That's what you okay. want to do. You, you want to oh, empower that's good. you. All right. 
Okay, very thank good, you. Cheryl. I'm very excited. I'm very excited for you, and thank you for sharing all of that. Thank you. All right, very good. And then Amy. Hey, Amy. How are you Hi. today? Hi. I'm okay. Yeah, I um, <clears throat> really appreciated the meditation you did yesterday. Um, I was thinking about how your voice is so soothing. It sounds like a childhood storybook and if all of our mothers were like that we wouldn't have any <laughs> issues to be talking about but anyway I just I really got present into <clears throat> um, how just the way we talk to ourselves and the way um, yeah the voice there was interesting I just wanted to make a comment there um, also um, I realized that um, my stomach symptoms that I've experienced for so long like the last 20 years I realized that all my emotions from my childhood, uh, living in that hypervigilant state, as Steve mentioned, as Bhagavad Swava, I'm sorry if I say your name um, incorrect, but uh, mentioned is that it's such a learned behavior that um, you feel like who you're going to be without it. And I realize I've stuffed my emotions, uh, resisted them in my stomach area, and it's a no wonder that it's been, you know, kind of a storage tank and um, yes. have uh the symptoms going on there so um <clears throat> as far as the do justice letter i did um i didn't write it on paper but i did allow myself to go to what i was feeling rather than resist it feel it <clears throat> when i realized a lot of anger came up and this feeling of being <clears throat> excuse me trapped in that <clears throat> so i um I really felt that, but I didn't get it on paper, but I, I was, I made space for me to feel it and be okay in that space. So. Very good. Yeah. Well done, Amy. I'm very yeah. proud of you. That's, yeah. that's good to do. And, and so you can, you can do it that way. And then if you find that it hasn't shifted enough, try writing, you know, actually writing it right. down. Yeah, I'll definitely be difference. writing it. Yes, definitely. Good, good, good. Definitely be very. writing it. And then the other thing was, um, I wanted to ask about anchor thoughts because I've, I realize I'm in the puppy training phase where it's like, okay, there I went again, come back onto the paper there, yeah. you know, come back onto the paper because I, I go to the feeling of, I don't like this. I don't want to be in this feeling. I don't want to, you know, I want to fix it. I want to move on. So getting back to how to secure that anchor thought, even if it's, you know, 20 times a day is where I'm at. Yeah. Great. Yes. Mm. Good, good idea. And sometimes you can use that, uh, that touchstone, even if it, it, it can be just, a, just a color, if you can't manage mm. a thought or a, right. or a phrase, purple. Okay. just purple. And the answer Got to it. everything is purple. Okay. <laughs> As I go about my day, purple. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's, okay, a, that's, that's a quick, easy way of, okay. of, um, of doing it. All right. Okay. And then I also want to make the analogy too, of um, when you mentioned about um, we're stuck where we're at, where we're at. Um, I saw the image of a bird in a cage where the door is open and yes. we're, the bird's able to fly out, but it just sits there, you know, and that's, that's kind of where I feel I'm at. Yeah. That is, that's a great analogy right there. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's exactly like that. The door yeah. is open. And, and I also wanted to mention too, about the migraines. I've never experienced a migraine, but I used to get eye migraines and, um, where your eyes would go all fuzzy and yeah, you can't see. Happened. Yes, yes. And I haven't had those in a while. So like you said, I think it was stress and um, yeah, yes. it's, yeah. So. Absolutely. Oh, well done, Amy. And thank yeah. you so much for sharing all of that because I you. know it will help others as well. Yes, You're very you. welcome. Yay. All right. So that's everyone who's on camera and I'm going to go now to the, um, to the chat. Uh, so Caro says, and I, so for anyone who's watching the recording as well, I'm the, the P if, if you put your, if you put stuff in the chat, I won't uh, mention your name. If you want to be incognito, the names I'm mentioning are people who've said it's okay to mention their names just to reassure anyone who wants to be incognito. So Caro says, uh, hi everyone. I've also had migraines for 15 years, always on the right side from back of the head to the temples and eye. It's linked to my cycle and fatigue mainly. I sympathize. Okay, so Caro, hopefully the conversation that we've had with Tamina um, today will, will help you as well and with Caro, uh, Cara. So hopefully there's, there's um, some good um, encouragement 
and ideas there for you to, to address that. Lisa says, Odile you, <laughs> Odile, you felt like an ascended angel with the energy of love. It was so wonderful. I went to my little self and was in the cosmos, happy and laughing and uh, in bliss. Thanks so much. You're very welcome, Lisa. That's wonderful to hear. I also meant to ask you all if you, if any of you managed to do the uh, the homework exercise over the last 24 hours of sending that love to, to other people in the group. You don't have to say, but just I wanted to check in if anybody had any feedback on that as well. Um, the feeling of Odile's love message was totally different uh, it was totally different a kind of different vibration but real that's wonderful to hear um cheryl says wow cara that's awesome migraine migraines are so debilitating and i'm glad you're free of them i'm so happy to be here with all of you very good and we're so happy you're with us as well cheryl um and then good morning i have a question what can I do if, as of lately, I have been having a, a hard, uh, I think, a hard time feeling love with any subject? I can get into good feelings, and I can feel like an energy, a tingling feeling all over my body, but not from the heart. Any suggestions? So that's really good. Thank you for sharing that. And that tingling feeling is very good. So focus on that because that's a good start, and then. As you're feeling that, what you can do with um, with any subject. So if you pick something or someone you love and then think about the reasons you love them. Think about, so uh, if it's a person or an animal, you can go into, you know, what their sweet face, uh, the smile or the funny things they've done, the feeling of, you know, like if it's an animal, how furry or warm or, you know, that kind of thing. Any good memories with the, with the animal or person. If it's a place, think about the reasons you like that place, that you love that place. So, you know, the, what you can see, what you can feel, what you can hear, uh, what you can smell, whatever you've got there. Um, if it's a, an activity, then again, all the reasons you love that activity, the feeling of doing that activity, why does it, what do you love about it? And it's going to be faint to begin with, but the more you do it, the, the more it will, uh, the more it will grow. Now, the other thing is when you feel that tingling, you can use that tingling as a springboard. So feel the tingling and then feel that tingling going out to your subject, the thing you love and why you love it. So combine those. So I hope that makes sense and, and it, that it helps, but let me know if not. And, and so uh, regarding your heart, it, you it will come to your heart as you home in on what you love about the things and the people and um for those who are using a place or an activity for your subject practice with that and then see if you can start bringing yourself to a person or an animal because that's going to be a stronger feeling eventually. You don't have to use it to begin with, but that's what you want to aim at because that's where you'll get your heart. That's where you get the really strong feeling in your heart because of the, con uh, the connection with other living beings is what produces oxytocin specifically. Okay, so when you think of a place or, a, or an activity you love, there's good chemicals going through, but it's the connection, the affection between living things that creates oxytocin specifically. And that's, that's the really powerful one for this exercise. So I hope that helps. And someone else says, I have, um, I have had an issue with authority figures by a, I believe my father and a sense of reticence to get involved with adults before I feel comfortable. Uh, then it's all fine, but it takes time. Not sure if that's one of the reasons why I don't get involved in conversation at the outset with members on the screen. Do I, uh, do I see the people on the screen as authority figures? Also, the showing of photos. Uh, is this the little child fearing of being judged? Can I be anonymous? You can absolutely be anonymous. And in, in addition to that, what you can do, so, so I'll answer the rest of it for, uh, in a minute, but first of all, you can be anonymous. You can ch change the name on your 
picture. So you can have a different name and you can unmute yourself and speak. So you can have, you can do audio only so that no one will know it is. I mean, we'll hear your voice, but we won't know. You can use a, a pseudonym, use a different name and um, you can keep your, your uh, video off and just use audio if you would like to ask questions and, and uh, participate in that way. You're very, very welcome to do that. Now, as for the authority thing, it seems like um, just from the bit that you've said there, I would say, yes, that, that you know, that definitely sounds like a, a reference there. What I would do is go back to think of in fact, start by going, what's the problem with authority? What's the feeling there? So you've mentioned judgment. So fear of being judged, that could definitely be it. You could start with that one and go, where in your childhood, how does it feel to be judged? And then where in your childhood did you feel that same feeling? It may be your father, as you've mentioned there, or it could be something else. Go for the earliest one you can remember. And if you can't, you know, if you can only remember something sort of more recent that's okay just go with the earliest one that you can and as you do that you may find earlier ones come to mind and then change it so what you want to end up with is that your father and everyone else in your childhood was loving and kind and compassionate and respectful and you felt safe and replace any judgment memories with um, praise and I'm so proud of you. You know, I'm so proud of you. I, I, um, I'm so glad that you're my child, that kind of thing. You want to make sure that you build up, um, that, and, uh, the memories that we will be planting in the new memory garden Facebook group will help to give you ideas as well. So once we all start posting our new memories in there, have a look through those for ideas for your own new memories. All right, so I think that hopefully that answers your question. If not, just uh, just let me know and uh, I'll clarify. All right, uh, there's some other comments. I have been able to maintain, oh, Carrie says, I have been able to maintain my unconditional love um, state except during a migraine. Wow, there's a lot of migraines going around today. <laughs> um, and when my daughter, <laughs> when my daughter's father is yelling at me, yeah, that makes sense. I have tried to imagine that I can't understand him, but he accuses me of not listening. I can't cope and it always makes me cry. Please help. If you have any any questions, you can unmute me. Okay, so Carrie, um, I'll unmute you in a minute. Uh, the first thing I would say is, of course, go into the superpower state as much as you can when you're not in the situation, when you're not being triggered. And as you say, you've been able to maintain the, the unconditional love state. So I would say get into that state and then imagine, just very gently imagine that he's yelling at you and see if you can maintain that state. But before you do that, of course, it's coming from childhood. So although you're dealing with this situation right now, the reference for how to, you know, it, 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 you can't cope and it makes you cry, that part of it is coming from childhood. So um, what's the worst thing about it? Or how do you know? So you're feeling, um, um, you're feeling whatever you're feeling, you know, that, that feeling of being, crying, not being able to cope. And then where in your childhood did you feel the same feeling? Where in your childhood did you experience that feeling of that you get when he's yelling at you? And change that. But get into your superpower state first, then go to your childhood, change those memories, and then test it by from the superpower state, imagine he's yelling at you, see if you can maintain it, see if you can aim that light at him, and so on. So, and until you're able to do that, and th but do it when you're not in that situation. So that um, when you do get into the situation, you've practiced that skill. So I hope that, oh, let me unmute you, as you said. Uh, so Carrie, is that helpful or do you, do you need more clarification? Yes, uh, it's very helpful, thank you. Good, you're very welcome, sweetheart. Well done. All right, and so, um, I find I can only maintain my unconditional love stage when I am doing the exercises. Any suggestions? Okay. And so you're not alone with that. And um, 
one of the things you can look at is when you're not doing the exercises, so in between, where is your focus going? So bearing in mind that wherever you're putting your focus is determining the chemicals that are being produced. So for example, let's say you do the exercise so you can feel the unconditional love and then you start going about your day. Where's your focus going as you're going about your day? Are you thinking about things you're worried about? Are you thinking about things that have happened in the past? Are you thinking about things people have said or whatever that or what's happening in the world? That will be your clue. And then again, like I was saying to Carrie, once you discover what it is that's pulling you out of that state, then practice getting into the state and then aim it at that and then imagine being in that situation. So let's say, um, let's say it's about the, the, the situation at the moment that's going on. So I get into the superpower state and then I notice that when I'm not doing the exercise, I am thinking about something that's, that's bothering me about what's going on in the world. So then I'll get into the superpower state and I'll think about thinking about what's going on in the world. I'll send, send that love, unconditional love, light into the darkness. And then I'll start thinking a little bit about what's going on in the world while trying to maintain that state. So in the same way we, we practice with the subject rejecting us, try and maintain that state. Now, when I lose the state, I'll just start again. Like it's like toppling over from the bike. So it's important to remember that this, this whole thing is a skill. It's a skill and it's conditioning the brain and body. So just like physical exercise, it does take time. It takes repetition and consistency, same way you would build muscles. Oh, deal. Uh, I would just say a, 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 another simple little activity that I've used in the past is to condition yourself by doing an, an activity that has no... Yes. So get into the superpower state while you're doing the dishes yes or something like that and then just see how long you can hold that state while you're doing the dishes or if you That's find that you know you're it has gone you know it's gone away then just bring it you know bring yourself back to that state and continue to see how long you can hold yourself in that state that so you're practicing with something that maybe is not as triggering as world events or something. Right. Yes. Thank you, Steve. That's, that's a very good point. And so, yes, while you're doing um, other things, uh, brushing your teeth, doing dishes, as Steve says, or household chores or watching TV, do it during the commercial breaks, you know, that kind of thing. So yes, good job. And uh, so hopefully that helps. If not, just uh, let me know. Uh, new and improved Boguswava. <laughs> yes, I like that. All right. So some thank yous, some lovely comments. Um, uh, yes, Kathy, it's a kind of Pavlov analogy conditioning. That's right. Yes. So that that's um, uh, that uh, what we were talking about with Boguswava, where you know, this happens, you feel like you should, or, or you automatically respond in a certain way. So it's unconditioning, it's undoing that, uh, that conditioning, that's right. And redoing the superpower conditioning instead. Um, I took on anger through osmosis and then started to live it and show it each and every day. Yes. And join the club. <laughs> That was me as well. <laughs> yes, e exactly. And now we have the ability to consciously choose, well, to become aware of it first, and then we have the ability to consciously choose it. So thank you for sharing that. Um, you can use my name. I'm not on video because I'm at work and we have to wear a mask. That's Tammy. Thank you, Tammy, uh, for sharing that. Yes. Um, so um I will, I will use your name in future. Yes. So Tammy is one of the essential workers. So thank you for your, for, for the work you're doing, Tammy. Um, Caro says, yes, I did the exercise. I chose Boggy Suave. Ah, lovely. So isn't that nice to know? Very good. Uh, Lisa says, yes, I did it to everyone. That's what I felt to do. Very good. I also did it to everyone, by the way. Um, so whenever I thought of it, I, I did it on, I mean, I do it um, anyway, randomly, but I did it specifically uh, for the exercise. 
Uh, yes, I did the exercise this morning for all of you, uh, including o Stephen O'Deal, thank you, with a screenshot uh, in order not to forget someone. Oh, that's nice. <clears throat> I know you said it was, sorry, I know you said just one or two, but I felt like doing it. And it was great to do. I felt very happy at the end, Sylvie. Thank you, Sylvie, for sharing that. That's wonderful. It really is a, a great, I, I, I set the challenge for you all to do it again um, in the next 24 hours. Um, Carrie says, I guess you should aim at make migraine headaches. Looks like a lot of us have this issue. Yes, so actually that, that, that would be a good, good idea. Uh, for migraines, I found imagining a vacuum was gently sucking it out of my head and then I replaced it with kinder thoughts and feelings. It helped me, so maybe it can help um, anyone with this horrible issue. Thank you, Kathy. So yes, hopefully that, that's a, a great um, tool to be able to use. Imagine it sucking that out of your head and putting, replacing it with kind, uh, compassionate thoughts. Very good. Okay, I'm aware of the time and I don't want to hold you all up. So let's do the, Steve, you wanted to say? Oh, I just, um, yeah, I, I, I know that we're, we're running close on time, but uh, Kara, did Kara have a couple of questions or, I don't know if you can oh, that in. I'm sorry, I didn't see. That's all right. Hey, Kara. Hi. Um, <clears throat> so I have usually gone to change memories when I was feeling bad, <clears throat> you know, like if I was feeling triggered. And so yesterday I had wanted to make some time to change memories and I was feeling really, really good. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I took my peace list and I went through them and I just had so much fun and I, it was really playful. But now my question is, does that work as well? Yes. And I'll tell you why. I, I think it works better. So um, I know that uh, that some of you know about fast EFT and um, you know and that's well worth looking into if you're interested in that. Um, one of the differences, one of the reasons we aren't calling and uh, saying we're doing fast EFT, there's a lot of uh, differences, but one of the main differences is that we don't go into the memory because with fast EFT you you need to try and feel the feeling and you know, go into the memory deeper um, for changing it. We don't believe that's necessary, or we found that that's not necessary. So one of the, the distinguishing things is that we don't believe you need to go into it at all. And the reason for that is physiological, because as you go into it and feel the feelings, you're firing that network again in the same order and pumping the stress chemicals into your system. And you can do it that way, but it's not necessary. Mm -hmm. Because what you're aiming at is the subconscious data and information. So you don't need the emotions for that. You don't need the chemicals in order to do that. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is go to, uh, like when I change memories now, there's no emotions. I remember like what I was talking about, the kids dancing around me and crying and and my brother and sister teasing me, I didn't feel anything. I just imagined it differently. Mm. Okay. So you're aiming the end result always for us is the new, the new timeline, the new information, the new data. And that's what you, so whatever you do and, to get to that, and it's not necessarily. And the, and the feeling and the, the feeling yes. of what that new uh, reference so Thanks. it's not that you're ignoring the feeling, it's just stay away from the, the old negative neurochemicals and do whatever you can to build new references and s allow yourself to soak in the, in the feeling of the new happy chemicals. Right, and so just to clarify, that doesn't mean if you, you, know, if you feel, if the, the negative emotions are there, that's okay, but they don't need to be there. So if they are there, you'll do the back and forth until they come down and then change the memory. But if they are not there, you don't need to create them or, or, or uh, sort of, um, you know, stir them up <laughs> is the main thing. Does that answer your question? Yeah, that's great. And then the other one is um, <clears throat> I have a couple of memories that I thought should have bothered me, <clears throat> but they don't seem to. So would it be a good idea to... <clears throat> 
imagine how I would have felt? Or should I just, or maybe I should just change the memory? Just change them. Just change them because there's no reason to, because if you start imagining how, as you imagine how it would have felt, you're pumping the stress, you're creating stress right. chemicals. Okay. So, so just change them. And then if you find, oh, that the emotions now, you know, the negative emotions have come, then that's, a, then, you know, then you address them, but you don't need to, uh, to make yourself feel that. All right. Thank you. That makes a lot of sense. You're very welcome. Good job. All right, so let's do the, uh, the exercise of aiming. So take a deep breath, close your eyes, and go into your superpower state, however you get into it. You can use your word or phrase, or the exercise of hugging your subject. Very good and feel your heart opening. Imagine that light or energy filling your whole body and all the cells of your body. Love each cell just for existing. And now imagine the little you, fill that little you with that same light or energy. Love that little child just for existing. Feel that kindness and compassion and feel that power. And now allow that power to fill that little you and shine out from that child. Filling the whole room they're in and everything and everyone around them. Very good. And now let's think about migraines and aim that power, that light, that energy at migraines. Whatever they are, whatever the symptoms, wherever they're coming from, love it all anyway. Shine that light into the darkness. Very, very good. And now let's fill Kathy with that light, that energy, Love Kathy just for existing. Very good. And now let's go to Kara. Fill Kara with that same light, that energy. From the tips of her toes to the top of her head and out to her fingertips. Love Kara just for existing. Good job. Now to Tamina. Fill Tamina with that same light, that energy. From the tips of her toes to the top of her head and out to her fingertips. Love Tamina just for existing. Now imagine that light or energy overflowing from Tamina and filling everything that she's dealing with. So anything that may cause overwhelm, let that light, that energy fill all of it. Very good. And let that light or energy fill little Tabina with whatever she dealt with. Fill her with that light, that energy, that love. Good job. And now to Lisa. Fill Lisa with that same light, that energy. Love Lisa just for existing. Good job. And now to Amy. Fill Amy with that light or energy from the tips of her toes to the top of her head and out to her fingertips. Love Amy just for existing. Very, very good. And now to Cheryl. Fill Cheryl with that light, that energy, that pure, unconditional love. Love Cheryl just for existing. Very, very good. 
And now to Boba Suave. Fill Boba Suave with that same light, that energy. From the tips of her toes to the top of her head and out to her fingertips. Love Boba Suave just for existing. Good job. And now to Katrina. Fill Katrina with that same light, that energy. Love Katrina just for existing. Pure, unconditional love from the tips of her toes to the top of her head and out to her fingertips. Very good. And now to Tammy. Fill Tammy with that same light or energy. From the tips of her toes to the top of her head, out to her fingertips, love Tammy just for existing. Now imagine that light or energy overflowing from Tammy and surrounding her in a protective energetic hazmat suit and filling the place wherever she is filling that place and everyone and everything in it. Love it all. It, love it all anyway, just for existing. Very, very good. And now to carry. Fill carry with that same light, that energy, that love. Love carry just for existing, filling all the cells of her body. Good job. Now to Caro. Fill Caro with that same light, that energy. Love Caro just for existing. Very good job. And now everyone else who's on the call, who's not on camera, who's incognito, love them. Send that light to them from the tips of their toes to the top of their head and out to their fingertips. Love them just for existing. Pure, unconditional love. And now to anyone watching the recording, fill them with that same light, that energy, from the tips of their toes to the top of their head, out to their fingertips. Love them just for existing. Good job. And now to your childhood, fill your whole childhood with that light, that energy, that love. Shine that light into any darkness. Love it all anyway. And finally, think of you later today and send this light or energy to that version of you no matter what, no matter what you do, no matter what you experience, love it all anyway and love you anyway. Fill that version of you from the tips of your toes to the top of your head, out to your fingertips with that light, that energy, that love. Love you just for existing. Very good. Take a deep breath and you can open your eyes. Good job, everyone. Excellent. How's everyone doing? Is that good? Excellent, very good. Yeah, it feels wonderful. Oh, good, Carrie, that's fantastic. Thanks for letting us know. Good job. And Lisa says, uh, I noticed that the Remit method always brings fresh new energy when you get into the groove of it. And it is super fun to have this powerful tool. It was so heaven sent. Ah, that's lovely, Lisa. Thank you, sweetheart. And you are heaven sent too, <laughs> to us. All right. So, uh, so that, so anybody have any questions before we finish? And if not, we will uh, see you again tomorrow. Same time, same place. Boggy Swara. Yeah, can I ask a question? Uh, you said if somebody is having as an object for the superpower, like a place, 
it's better to have a person or animal. Is that okay if I imagine myself a little, a little, a little? Absolutely, more? that's the best one. Oh, yes. awesome! Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yourself as a child is the is is the most powerful one you can do. Okay, good. Thank good you. Good job, Bagiswabi. You're welcome. All right, and Tamina says, "I feel so much better now." Yay! Well done, Tamina. And so keep that up. Keep up the momentum of this, and um, and yeah, look after yourself. Be kind to you. All right. Good job. Katrina. Yeah. Hey. I just want to um, the Facebook page. Do I just um, go to the Google page and type that in? Uh, yes. So if you copy that, you got that address that I posted there. Yeah. I'm so I just type that into the Google page. Yeah. Just copy and paste it into it. Yes. I don't know how to paste. What oh, you, you can. Okay. You can, you can type it in. Yes. Either way. Yep. So, okay. so just to clarify, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash all one word new memory garden. I'm saying that for people watching the, the recording as well. Uh, so facebook.com forward slash groups with an S forward slash new memory garden. That's all one word and that's all small, small letters. All right. And we yes. will see you in there. Yeah. Good job. All right, everyone, have a fantastic rest of your day. Uh, do practice uh, that same aiming at somebody in the group, one or more people in the group uh, over, the, over the course of the, the next few hours. And we'll see you tomorrow. Lots of love to all of you. Bye-bye now.